Hi, this is Will from Intrinsic Dev and today I'm going to give you a quick run through of how to set up our Apple TV driver for Control 4. So as with all of our drivers, the first place to head to is a website, intrinsicdev.com, to download the latest version. Now any of our drivers released after May 2020 include a new system which automatically notifies you inside of Composer when a new version is available. So if it says that, just head on over to the website and whatever file is on the website is going to be the latest build. So in this instance, we head on over, search for Apple TV. Here's the list. There's our Control 4 driver for Apple TV. So we can go to that page. We can log in to download it. Once we've logged in, we have another button that appears here, which enables us to download the driver. Um, and if we've not already purchased it, we can purchase a license key for it there too. So once we've got that driver, which I already have, we've got it downloaded and I've got the files here on the desktop. So there's two parts to this driver. We have the master driver, which is the main driver that does all of the talking to the Apple TVs and the discovery of the Apple TVs on your network. And then the actual device driver itself, which drives each individual Apple TV. So to set those up, we head on over to Composer. We need to add the driver, so driver, add or update driver, and we'd select each of those drivers and click open to add them to our library. Now in this instance, I already have them installed and I've already got them here, so I'll just come and type in Apple and there we go. So we have a master and uh, a device driver. So we only need one master per project. So I'm going to grab that and I'm going to put it inside my rack on this project. And as you see, that's starting up. As the driver starts up, it checks the license information and it fires out the MAC address there uh, just for easy access for debugging. And we have a trace level which can be toggled to incoming, outgoing or all, which shows up on the lower page. So you can see what's going on as the driver's carrying out its discovery. We then also need to add one of these media remote protocol drivers for every Apple TV that we have in the installation. Now on this little, little test setup, I just have the one Apple TV and that's in the living room. So I'm going to drag that over there. And again, it's just doing the licensing check, talking into the server and the driver's all licensed there. So then all we need to do now to set this driver up is to enter the IP address of the Apple TV we want to control. Now in this instance we always recommend that you set a static IP so that it doesn't change. So we're on 192.168.1.45 in this instance so we'll click set and that is the driver linked. This master driver will automatically communicate to any of these device drivers that you have in the project, however many of them you have, and it will pass through that information to it. So I'll just go through some of the features inside this device driver uh, to highlight what they do. Um, as you can see, we've got a whole load of drop downs here, and each of these drop downs is assigned against a button on the remote control. Now, when we first released this driver, these were all hard coded and uh, Within a matter of weeks, we have people coming to us, asking us if they could make the buttons do different things. And uh, this changed uh, between person to person as to what they wanted each button to do. So in the end, what we decided to do was add these drop downs. So you can choose what you want each button on your remote control to do. And it's completely flexible and customizable from project to project. The other buttons we have here are obviously a trace if we want to see what the driver is doing and this skip interval button. And this is the distance in seconds, the amount of time in seconds that is skipped when you use the skip buttons inside of the driver. The final thing that we can see inside this interface is this album, artist and track. And this is basically the metadata information that we're getting from the Apple TV. Um, at the moment, it's just there for information purposes. Uh, we don't have a way of displaying that nicely in the in the Apple TV media interface, 
uh, that we're using for control four but hopefully one day we'll be able to pull all of that in there for you uh, along with the artwork too uh, but we thought we'd add it into this back end as a nice little touch so if i give you an example of that um, let's just get this driver and start navigating that's woken up my apple tv there and uh, we want to go back and we'll open netflix we just give that a, a little second to fire up and we'll jump on and let's just start something playing there in the background you can oh, probably hear the, hear the noise right and there we go make some quick coin with your you'll have seen like that. that track's just changed there uh, for the what we're watching on netflix if we're playing music or anything that also would change and we'd have the full album and artist for that too so all that remains to get this working is to go to connections and link the output of the apple tv to the input on the television and in this case it's here it's on hdmi 3 and then to obviously refresh navigators and that's it that's our apple tv driver all fully installed and working if you have any uh, more questions about this driver please feel free to head on over to the website and submit a ticket at intrinsicdev.com forward slash support um, please feel free to like and share and subscribe to our videos below have a great day